Thank you very much. Well, our next stop, 1995. Bill Clinton was president. Congress was led by the GOP. A truck bomb killed 168 people in Oklahoma City at the federal building. Windows 95 was released, and the internet really took off. For many of us, Amazon.com's launch was an important moment in 1995. O.J. Simpson was found not guilty as 150 million people watched. And people talked about friends and ER. And thanks to a bull market, gas and movie tickets cost about the same as they did five years ago. Hollywood cashed in with a James Bond movie in Golden Eye and groundbreaking computer technology in Toy Story. We had 55 women in Congress, two women on the Supreme Court, and in Chicago, uh, Mayor Daley entered his third term. A deadly heat hit the Midwest, and my daughter Cynthia started senior kindergarten, <laughs> sure she would become a professional gymnast. <laughs> At the foundation, we celebrated 10 years and looked to our future and to our sustainability. With the leadership of two of our former board members, Joe Moore and Sue Marino, we launched our endowment campaign, The Promise for Tomorrow. Faye Clayton, a key supporter of our campaign, had just returned victorious from the Supreme Court as lead counsel on Now versus Scheidler, a landmark case that took on extremist violence against reproductive health clinics. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm Faye Clayton, and I am a lawyer, but more importantly, I'm a former board member of the Chicago Foundation for Women, women and a donor for 20 years. Like many women in this room, I hit upon the right career only after a very circuitous route. I grew up on a New Jersey farm, and I could operate a tractor by age six, even though I couldn't reach quite all the pedals. There were no lawyers in my family, and very few weak working women at that. Like so many women who came of age in the 60s, I didn't have any real career expectation. By age 18, I was married, and by age 23, I was a mother of three. I didn't consider a real career until after I started seeing myself as a feminist and valued myself as someone who could make her own free choice. Through the women's movement in Chicago, I began to realize how vital the law was to ensuring civil rights and gender equality and reproductive rights and all the rest. So while teaching preschool by day, I took my first two and a half years of law school at night, along with my buddy Carol over there. <laughs> with the support of my five, six, and seven-year-old children who were very willing to help share the cooking and very quickly surpassed my skills. <laughs> I graduated at the top of my class and therefore got a job in a top law firm. Ultimately, I was able to help found Illinois' largest majority women-owned law firm at the time, a firm I'm still very happily working in today. Doing that, I've had the joys of representing organizations that stir my heart, including many of the grantees of the Chicago Foundation for Women, including ACLU, Women Employed, Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights, Planned Parenthood, and of course, the National Organization for Women. As Andy said, I even got to support women's right to choose in the United States Supreme Court. When it, thank you, thank you. And thank you for all your support on that back then. When it turned out that my law career was paying me significantly more than I was earning as a preschool teacher, <laughs> surprise, surprise, I wanted to put my newfound money to work on causes that meant so much to me. And that's when I discovered the Chicago Foundation for Women. It helped me to become a philanthropist for women and girls. Philanthropist, I still stumble over that word. It seems like a big one, but all it means is I give what I can. Soon after joining the foundation's board, I saw that it was going to take a big commitment 
to sustain our grantees for the long run. And so in 1995, with the other members of the board, we planned an endowment campaign. We gave ourselves a year to reach our most ambitious funding goal to date, a million dollars. We called it a million for the millennium. My husband Lowell and I enthusiastically signed on, but I crossed my fingers. Were there enough people who got it? If they did get it, would they take the leap of faith and write a really big check? The answer on both counts was yes. Amazingly, we reached and exceeded our goal six months ahead of schedule, with more people lining up to participate after that. The endowment that we started ensures that 25 years down the line, this foundation will still be around. It'll be here to lift up women's voices. It'll be here to support groundbreaking community work. Our growth has shown that women's funds have clout and that women and girls are the best investment anyone can make. I look around this room and I see so many old friends who've been here with their support for years and years, but I also see many new faces, and in some ways that's even more wonderful. Together, we are the community that makes the Chicago Foundation for Women's good work possible. I'm proud to have been part of it for 20 years and happy to be in the position to give back. <laughs>